Uh, my name is Dan Brockoff, and I am the Vice President of Programming for College Democrats. I'd like to just begin by saying a few words about why we're all here. So, uh, 30 odd years ago, Rob Gregorovich was a student at Northwestern University. He had the same lessons uh, that we now have. He sat where we now sit. This event is about today's students, who will be tomorrow's leaders. It's about making sure that tomorrow's leaders have respect for the rule of law. So, when Rod Lagoyevich was elected governor in 2002, he pledged to reform the broken system. He called for cleaning house. He called for rewriting ethics laws. And when he thanked his supporters, he said that he had felt disappointment. Disappointment in a government that's been more preoccupied with public corruption than public service. Eight years later, we've all read the news, we've all seen the charges. No matter what else is true, we know this much. He found those promises hard to keep. We're here because the College Democrats believe that scandal does not need to happen in Illinois. We think the best way to better our politics isn't to ignore the past, it's to learn from it. This is about accountability. Accountability for our past, for our present, and for our future leaders. We want to have a real conversation because we're sick of the media circus. Elections are coming up soon, and we don't want to be having the same conversation again four years from now eight years from now. We hope that by the end of tonight, you'll agree with us. And with that, I want to turn it over to John Fink, who will introduce our panel for the event tonight. Thanks very much. He's been accused of racketeering, wire fraud, conspiracy to commit extortion, and lying to federal agents. Rogovich was removed from office on January 29, 2009, by a unanimous vote of the Illinois State Senate. The College Democrats believe that we need a more ethical form of politics. For that, we need to challenge ourselves, our state, and our leaders. Until we do, we'll never be able to move forward. Ladies and gentlemen, the former governor of Illinois, Brad Bogoyevich. Thank you. Let me begin by thanking Jordan for that warm introduction. <laughs> I, you know, I have to say that's not one of my best introductions I've ever received, but. Um, I appreciate uh, the fact that he did this and gave me a chance to be here. And I want to thank Jordan Fine, uh, the president of the Northwestern College Democrats. I also want to thank Jonathan Foreman, the co-vice president uh, of this organization, uh, and Dan Rockoff, who just spoke a moment ago. Uh, if I could just gently uh, correct Dan, but, but before I do, uh, when we got here, I, I heard that they said that uh, Elvis was uh, just in the building. Did I get that right? <laughs> And I want to thank you for preparing me to Elvis. <laughs> and since we're talking about Elvis, let me say that in June of 1972, before he performed in Madison Square Garden, Elvis had never performed in Madison Square Garden before until 1972. He met with the press, which was something he didn't do a lot of. And the first thing he said to the press was, innocent of all charges. And I want to paraphrase, in fact, I want to quote Elvis, to tell you, I am innocent of all charges. Every allegation against me is false, they are lies, and when I have my day in court, I will prove that they are lies. And I will also say that Dan's, uh, Rockoff's opening introduction would be accurate if, in fact, these allegations were true, but they're not. And I'm delighted to have an opportunity to talk to you about ethics and government, talk to you about my tenure in office as governor, and tell you how I was not only ethical and follow the laws, but how I kept my promises, and how we changed things in state government in Springfield. And now, since I've been illegally and unethically hijacked from office, without due process, and an opportunity to bring witnesses I wanted, and tapes to be heard, how things had changed, and the, and the warnings I gave the people of Illinois, for example, like a tax increase by my successor, are all proving to be true. But before I do that, I just want to remind some of you, if you don't know already, that I have a special place in my heart for Northwestern. I am uh, delighted to tell you that I was married here on this campus 20 years ago, the Alice Millar Chapel. And my wife, Pat, is not here right now, so uh, what I'm saying is not necessarily self-serving, but I have to say I count that as one of the happiest days of my life. And if any of you see Patty and you feel like you want to tell her that I said that about her, she wasn't here, feel free to do so. <laughs> Let me also say that 30 years ago, I graduated from Northwestern with a degree in history, the College of Arts and Sciences. And uh, it was 30 years ago uh, that I uh, 
went to Northwestern, and uh, I want you to know that uh, I know what it's like to go through ups and downs. I've had some good days and some not so good days. I've had some ups uh, and uh, peaks in my life, and right now I'm sort of in a valley. I don't mind telling you. I don't mind telling you at times like this when you're facing down facing. I kind of wish I was back in college. <laughs> Speaking of college, uh, let me have a show of hands. Anybody out there an FBI agent? Because if you are, feel free to come close. If you're wearing wires and taping me, I want you to hear what I have to say. And I want to save you. I want to save you some of the trouble and save some taxpayer dollars. I recently received the notice from your office of registrar here at Northwestern that the prosecutors and the federal government have just subpoenaed my college records when I went here at Northwestern. Now that was 30 years ago. They subpoenaed all the financial records, they subpoenaed evidently uh, my classroom participation, my grades, presu presumably my essays if they still exist, and all the tests that I took. Uh, let me also say, and I want to say to you some of the hard work, no need to do the work, I'll tell you exactly what you'll find. You'll find that back there 30 years ago when I went to Northwestern for two years as a junior and a senior, we paid our tuition. The tuition was expensive back then. I know it's more expensive today. This is a great school with a great tradition in academics, and the tuition is pretty high. My mother and father worked real hard to make sure that they can afford to pay for this college. I didn't get financial loans. I didn't get financial aid. Uh, I wasn't good enough to get a scholarship. My parents paid that tuition with a little help from me working. My father was an immigrant steel worker who came here a free place, the land of opportunity, free communism, he spent four years in a Nazi prison of war camp, and he had great pride in the fact that he was working hard to send his youngest son to a great school like this. In fact, it was such a matter of pride for my dad that he didn't want me to even apply for financial aid, though my parents' financial circumstance would probably have allowed me to get it. Instead, what my dad did at the age of 63 was quit his job at the Finkel Steel Company in the north side, not far from where I was raised, and take a job up on the Alaskan pipeline. When most people are thinking about retiring at 63, my dad left his family to take a job working as a janitor on the Alaskan pipeline because the wages up there were so good. And it was those wages that helped send his youngest son to a great school like Northwestern. The FBI agents and the federal government will also find that uh, we couldn't afford for me to live on campus, so I was a commuter student. I look back on that and with some degree of regret. This is a great campus, the whole college experience living on campus. I didn't have a chance to do that, so I either took a CTA bus and the L to come to Northwestern just about every day, or once in a while to borrow my father's car and drive here. But I lived back home in the neighborhood with my mother and my Aunt Helen, senior citizen, not exactly the college experience that a lot of you probably would choose to have, but I was there, and what I did on Thursday nights was deliver pizzas, and what I did on Friday nights was deliver pizzas, and Saturday nights deliver pizzas. And on Sunday nights, I delivered pizzas. I delivered pizzas on Christmas Eve, where the tips were good, but the business was slow. I delivered pizzas on New Year's Eve, where business was good and tips were good. In short, I worked hard, too, to try to help my parents pay for this great school and give me a chance to get the degree I got, give me a chance to be able to grow and live the American dream. 